Corey, and welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. I want to talk to you guys about, hope you're doing well. Hope Lake Orion's doing well. I want to talk about some interesting things that have been going on in the, in the news. Um, some of you guys have been following the events that has been occurring in Iraq. The surgeons of ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq, and also Syria. And the involvement of what's going on in Iraq. Iraq is recently, well, not recently, but they've been involved in a Shiite versus Sunni war that has American involvement. That recently American bombs have been, bom or American planes have been bombing areas in Iraq, particularly against, um, quote, areas that ISIS supports. Um, but it's also very important to understand the American involvement in Iraq and how it's dated to since the 1990s and why Iraq is in the mess today. I want to talk about the American intervention in Iraq. Um, it started during the Gulf War in 1990 through 1991. The major reason for the Gulf War starting was Saddam Hussein was bankrupt. Saddam Hussein was the president slash dictator of Iraq during the during the Iraq Iran war that took place from 1980 to 1989. At that time, Iraq and Iran engaged in a bloody war, which neither side came out the victor, but millions and millions of Iraqis and Iranians were dead. The Americans indirectly supported the Iraqis, though. They also supported some, the Iranians as well. So they were supporting both sides, though publicly they were supporting the Iraqis. So as a result of the war, Iraq was bankrupt. Iraq needed money. So they looked down southeast. They looked at Kuwait, their, their small neighbor, which Iraq often saw as a pest. But the thing was Kuwait was rich. Kuwait had oil. Iraq, like many, like many Iraqis, felt Kuwait was Iraq and should stay Iraq. But Kuwaitis felt that they were their own nation. They weren't going to let a bully bully them, particularly their neighbors to the north. And Iraq was one of the more powerful regions in the Middle East, along with Saudi Arabia and Iran. So. Saddam ordered the, the Iraqi army to occupy Kuwait in 1990. And as a result, they kept the oil, they, they kept the oil that was there. And Kuwait was forced to sell all its oil to Iraq. And this caused conflict with the United States and many of its allies who rely upon Kuwaiti oil. Saddam, they demanded that Saddam would leave Kuwait. They would give ultimatums in the United Nations, they give ultimatums directly. Saddam would not leave. He felt, as many Iraqi nationalists felt at that time, Iraq had a right to be in Kuwait. Kuwait was their territory, and that Kuwait w was theirs and theirs alone. So, as a result, this got significant concerns in Saudi Arabia. Now, when I talk about Shia and Sunni, when I look at Saudi Arabia is probably one of the more powerful countries in the Middle East. Iraq is, Iraq, their government at that time was Sunni. Saudi Arabia at that time also was Sunni, but also was more, quote, so-called moderate Sunni. So Saudi Arabia was not very happy with what was going on in Iraq, saw Saddam Hussein as a threat. So he, they had a choice to make. They, the Americans offered to have their troops come into Saudi Arabia. There was another group at that time that was also offering its services which was the Mujahideen 
who had fought in Afghanistan against the Soviet Union. They off led by Osama bin Laden. They offered to fight in to fight for the Saudis against the Iraqis, the invading Iraqi army. The Saudis refused. The Saudis decided to enlist American help and American soldiers for the first time went on to Middle East soil, landing in Saudi Arabia. The United States and the Saud and Saudi Arabia had a relationship that was into World War II, that went into through World War II and extended in, and it still extends to the present day. Now, the big, the big ally here also, other than Saudi Arabia, was Turkey. Turkey is a NATO ally. Turkey allowed the United States to have, to have bases there. And also, the other country that supported the United States, though tried to be at quiet, was Israel. Israel supported the United States and its allies during the Iraqi operation. As a result, the Iraqi government bombed Israel, which did not sit well with the Israelis, nor did it sit well with the Americans in the allies. However, the United States preferred to have the Middle, have Middle Eastern countries get involved in this conflict, and that it was not Israelis' conflict to fight. If the Israelis intervened, and much of the Middle East did, do not like Israel, do not like the Israelis to this day. So it was very important to keep Israel's role at a minimum. So the Americans, with support of a coalition, you had several countries join in this coalition, including Middle Eastern countries. They bombed Iraq. They forced Saddam out of Kuwait. They forced, they also forced them to move north, destroyed Iraq's military capabilities, well, most of them. And as a result, the Americans were able to protect Kuwait. The Americans and the Allies were, were protecting Kuwait. Now this did not get, this got support, but this, like what we'll talk about in the next segment, this gained a lot of controversy, especially from countries like the Soviet Union who were who had business economic ties to Iraq. Also, China was very strongly against any intervention in Iraq. Um, but there was also the American justification of chemical weapons against the Kurds. What we'll find out is following the American, instead of the Americans occupying Iraq, the Americans simply decided to withdraw. That and as a result, Saddam Hussein was able to use chemical weapons on the Kurds, especially in northern Iraq, in which millions and millions of deaths occurred because of Saddam's usage of chemical weapons. As a result, the Americans kept an eye on Iraq, Americans and the Allies, but especially Americans, kept an eye on Iraq to make sure that nothing was going on so they would bomb Iraq making sure that the chemical weapons were not being used, that Saddam was not doing anything stupid. Um, as a result, it would trigger some several small bombings in Iraq in, the, in establishing a no-fly zone in Iraq. And there was, but Saddam barely was clinging on to power. Saddam still had power. Saddam still had um, involvement, influence in Iraq. Now, Iraqis, when their views of Saddam, the Shia hated Saddam, mostly because they were, there was a lot of groups that were connected to Iran. Saddam had went against the Shia. Saddam himself was a Sunni. Throughout the history of Iraq, Iraq had a lot of ties to, to Nazi Germany and also to the Soviet Union, but also relied upon other pressure, other economic aid, especially Western aid. Um, they supported the United States during its conflicts with Iran. But at the same time, Saddam's idols were Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. 
Saddam looked up to both of them as mentors as far as how to govern his country. And in today's world, you know, dictatorships aren't, don't go over well, as we'll find out on our next segment of History Now here on ONTV. Hello, Lake Orion and Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina here talking a new show here called OA Now. We're going to talk about sports from football to basketball to volleyball to track and field to soccer, cross country, etc. here on OA Now on ON TV. Welcome back to History Now here on ON TV. We're going to continue our subject of the American intervention in Iraq. 9-11-2001, the September 11th terrorist attacks where Al-Qaeda ended up with planes bombing the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and Pennsylvania in which thousands and thousands of Americans died. As a result, the Americans and a coalition of allies went to war against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and forced the government out of power. Now, what was going on in Iraq at that time was Iraq was one of the countries that did not, you know, quickly condemn what happened on 9-11. There was allegations that Saddam supported the 9-11 hijackers. Those claims were not true. Iraq wanted to, quote, be left alone at that time, but at the same time, the American government, led by President George W. Bush, he was focused on regime change in Iraq, just like his father, George H.W. Bush, wanted to see regime change in Iraq. Once again, we have to talk about oil because in the Middle East, especially in Iraq, it is a hotbed for oil. What happened was oil was Iraq being in OPEC had a lot of influence over oil prices over crude oil and prices like that, you know, prices like that under a tyrannical country was considered very dangerous. So that was another one of the claims that Iraq could control oil, but also the claim that Iraq had chemical weapons, that, had, that they had nuclear weapons, which they did not have nuclear weapons but they did have chemical weapons. They, did ha they were ex executing the Kurds in the north. They were causing turmoil in, throughout the rest of the country. They favored the Sunnis over the Shia. And as a result, Iraq, they claimed that Iraq was part of an axis of evil. And those justifications the American government had was intent was met was enough to go to war with Iraq this time for regime change now this war in Iraq in 2003 was very controversial because there was no ties between Iraq and al-Qaeda there was also as I said Russia had economic interests in Iraq China had economic interests in Iraq and a lot of countries did not support the invasion of Iraq. France did not, Germany did not, and as a result they forced, America was forced to have a smaller coalition of Great Britain, um, some smaller Middle Eastern states. Um, Spain at first joined but later backed out because of the issue over chemical weapons. The Americans and their allies, especially the Kurds and the, um, you know, the Kurds along with other support, other countries forced Saddam out of power in Iraq. They invaded Baghdad. This time, however, unlike the last war, the Gulf War, the Americans occupied Iraq, which not everybody liked. There was a lot of countries that were against the occupation. 
not everybody was not everybody supported the occupation the Americans justified it as they needed to take down a tyrant however a lot of the world saw it as the Americans occupying another sovereign country based upon based on its own interests particularly oil now as I said not everybody was welcoming of the invasion particularly Shia led by um, a Shia cleric Motara al Sadr who established himself condemning the American occupation in Iraq and was encouraging Shia to fight against American troops now there was also another group that formed in Iraq called Al Qaeda in Iraq which was an offspring of Al Qaeda and it was led by a man called Abu Musa al Zarqawi who himself was a Sunni he viewed he viewed Iraq as an open vacuum he wanted to establish an Islamic state in Iraq his goal was to their both his goal was to establish a state similar to to an Al Qaeda state but was far more radical far more vicious far more they supported beheadings they didn't care what religion you were though they mostly focused on Shiite they wanted to kill Westerners as well as we saw with the unfortunate execution of Nick Berg so the Americans as an occupying power was involved in a war a sectarian war between Shia and Sunnis now Muqtada al Sadr had the support of Iran during that time and the United States and Iran are not on good terms still not on good terms to this day and then Al Qaeda in Iraq who the majority were Sunnis but it was very important for the Americans to encourage moderate Sunnis that the uh, that the Iraqi that the Sunnis that they were trying that the Al Qaeda in Iraq were trying to sabotage their their religion Sunni religion and that it wasn't wise to join up with these radical Islamists so many moderate Sunni tribes joined up with the Americans and the Western allies and helped overthrow eventually helped take down Al Qaeda in Iraq at the same time American forces were able to capture Saddam were located Saddam in his hometown of Tikrit they executed Saddam's sons Uday and Qusay they sent Saddam to trial in which the Iraqi government a newly formed Iraqi government led by Nouri al-Maliki was able to um, was able to convict Saddam and eventually hang Saddam for his crimes now this now the execution of Saddam was controversial countries like the United States and Iran actually applauded the execution other countries particularly in Europe Russia condemned the execution saying that he should have spent the rest of his life in prison now as a result the execution of Saddam did not did not un, did not finish what was going on in Iraq in fact you had a Shiite Sunni war it was like you had three sides fighting each other now as we will discuss on the third segment what ha, what the secretary in violence and also the rise of the so-called Islamic state in Iraq you're on History Now, you're on ONTV. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I was talking about the American intervention in Iraq. Now, with the American intervention in Iraq, 
we witnessed multiple American casualties in Iraq from Al Qaeda in Iraq, Shiite forces led by Muqtada al Sadr, and it was just a complete mess. And then you had General David Petraeus, who led a surge into Iraq of American forces, able to help help retain American occupation, retain. But President Barack Obama comes into power in 2008. He openly says he's going to withdraw American troops from Iraq. He openly said that he would end American combat in Iraq, which was very popular at the time with the American public because the American public was war weary. The American public was, you know, they didn't want to see another occupation in, in Iraq. So. At that time, it was very popular. Today, it is not, as we'll find out in a minute. The hope was to allow the Iraqi government to govern themselves, to allow a, a inclusive Iraqi government of Sunni and Shia, and to, to have Iraq become a major member in society. Now, as a re now the American government, the Americans had and the Allies had manhandled Al Qaeda in Iraq. Al Qaeda in Iraq was was down at that point. They had killed Abu Mazhab al Zarqawi. They had Muqtada al Sadr kind of stepped back, hoping and dreaming that for an American withdrawal. They had, he had supported that, the American withdrawal. So in 2011, the Americans officially withdrew from Iraq. At the same time, the promises that the Iraqi government had, had claimed were not kept. It resulted in, this, in this, the Shiite government of Nouri al-Maliki, who was part of who is, part, who is a Shia, he drove the Sunnis, he alienated the Sunnis to the point where the Sunnis could not trust the government. He was establishing tyranny on the Sunni population. Now, we didn't talk about the Kurds because the Kurds had American support and the Iraqi government knew to, to quote, leave them alone. But the Sunni areas were alienated and it resulted in the war in it and what was going on next door in Syria was Syria was in civil war Bashir al-Assad the dictator in Syria was is fighting for power was still is fighting for power against a a rebellion slash opposition but it was not a unified opposition some of its members included Syrian, include Syrian moderates, but also hardliners and also Islamist groups such as the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. At that time, it was just called the Islamic State in Syria. But they were able to gain mass control of land. They were, and then they were able to enter into Iraq as well. They invaded Mosul which was a very big, important town to conquer in Iraq. And also they were able to take over massive amounts of Iraqi territory, mostly lands that were impacted by alienated Sunnis. And they forced the Iraqi army out into areas near Baghdad. And also they were fighting the Kurds also in Iraq, also in northern Iraq. Now, life under the Islamic State is very vicious. Um, all opposition relig religions were either they were forced to withdraw, they had to pay a sum, or they were forced out or even executed. Millions of Iraqis have been executed thanks to the Islamic State ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And as a result, and also you had massive beheadings 
you know, Westerners were being beheading, beheaded. It was very similar to what Al-Qaeda in Iraq had established. Only the Islamic State had one as intending to build a Kafiplate or Keflate in Iraq and also in Syria. And as a result, because of the lack of intervention that the Iraqi army had did, that they were not that the they were not poor, they were properly trained as the Americans thought. We thought the American army had properly trained them. It was not meant to be. And as a result, we see this rise of an Islamist group, ISIS, that threatens American interests, not just in Iraq, but throughout the entire world. And as a result, the United States, along with several allies, especially Middle Eastern allies, have began bombing areas in Iraq, but also in Syria. So as a result, this is, and once again, we are experiencing a rise in sectarian violence between Shia and Sunni, only it's seen as ISIS supporting majority of Sunnis and the Shia are also, are also fighting as well, indirectly linking the United States and Iran as allies. Hopefully, there can be a better solution that comes out of Iraq. Um, Iraq was once a prospering country that went through its fair share of war. You had the Gulf War. You had the American invasion in 2003. And then at present, you have this civil war, but also a war against the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria going on. Hopefully, Iraq can reconcile as a government. Hopefully, they can have a unity government. That, and hopefully, one day, Iraq can govern itself again. As for today, I'm heading on out for history now. Have a good night, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.